Alex Bosworth. I work at Lightning Labs. I'm an infrastructure lead there. And uh, I wanted to talk about um, some project that I'm working on uh, called Lightning Loop. Um, and uh, that uses a technology called submarine swaps to bridge on chain and off chain. I'm going to talk about the Hyperloop. This is a new concept. Um, so, to kind of zoom out on the, what problem we're working on, um, we have this like cool lightning network. Um, but it's the way to think about the lightning network is that it's a it's a complementary system to to the chain. The chain works in a certain way, and the lightning network works in a certain way, and uh, each have their pros and cons. Um, so. If you really want to get the most effective way to send capital around, you want to actually be able to leverage both. So if you're sending a very small amount, Lightning Network has great characteristics for sending small amount. And if you're sending a huge amount, then the blockchain has amazing characteristics for that. Um, and the submarine swaps is a way to bridge those two, those two together. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk about is that um, you know, when we talk about like going to huge scale, um, we're not talking about huge scale on day one. It's going to take optimization of these technologies um, in order to actually realize those huge, you know, those scale benefits that are theoretical. Um, and uh, just to reiterate, like Lightning Loop is a service that uh, Lightning Labs is offering as a product, and it's something it's a, something that we're standing behind, and you can go and try it out. And it's uh, it's free uh, in the current alpha period. So uh, I want to go back to the like, original white paper of Lightning, which you know, it says, Bitcoin can scale to billions of users without custodial risk or blockchain centralization. Um, so that's a pretty bold statement that says you know, everybody is going to use Lightning in the world. And if you actually do the numbers on a non-optimized version of Lightning, it's, you know, if, like, let's say you took the totally naive implementation of channels. It would take years of, of, create, of channels because of the block size limit in order to make channels to cover billions of people. Um, and even if you did create channels for all these billions of people, um, they, would be, they, would, they would run into a situation where they've depleted their channels in all likelihood, that, ba the, that the balances wouldn't just flow back and forth perfectly, that sometimes you'd have balances that would, would be depleted, and sometimes you'd need, to, you'd need to move them around in another way. And, and, and that's uh, kind of illustrating this concept of flow. That's, that's like a characteristic of the Lightning Network. And um, it's not so obvious, but um, you can think about it like the internet. So like, if you have your connection to the internet, and let's say your connection is dial-up, if the rest of the internet is not dial-up, um, it doesn't matter how fast they are. It matters how fast you are. Uh, and in the code, we use this concept called bandwidth. So you have like upload and download bandwidth. So even if you have great bandwidth, if your destination doesn't have good bandwidth, then you're limited by that slowest link on the chain. OK, so uh, I also want to kind of describe like, how submarine swaps addresses that problem. So submarine swaps addresses the issue where you have this um, unbalancing. So you have maybe my bandwidth has been depleted. I've spent down my entire channel. Or people have spent, spent down the entire, entire channel in my direction. I'm a merchant. I'm being very successful. And there's all the liquidity on the channel has come over to my side. Once we get into that situation, there's nothing within the Lightning Network that can fix that. Um, you, you just have to either make, like, let's say you've, you've uh, received all the, all the payments that you can receive. You reach your, your limit. In that case, there's no like, internal rebalancing of your channels that can fix that situation so that you can continue to re receive payments. So in that case, you have to go to an external settlement mechanism. So uh, you know, one way would be you can uh, go to a lightning-enabled exchange, and you can say, OK, I'm going to push all my funds that I've received from all my customers back onto the exchange over lightning. Um, so that's, a, that's a, a, a method of external settlement. Um, so submarine swaps is, is also a method of external se settlement. And how it works is you say, I'm going to uh, spend down my channel to the greater network, but I'm going to receive back the same funds using the same HTLC on chain. And uh, that's going to use the chain as an external settlement mechanism. And it's going to have the, the, the big advantage that I, instead of trusting the exchange with all my funds, I'm, they're, they're locked into the same HTLC that Lightning normally uses, which means that uh, if I spend, I'm guaranteed to get my money back on-chain via the smart contract. 
Um, so we built this out as a service. Um, and the, the big things we're really focusing on are this trust minimization concept. And we're also thinking about network health. So you know, a lot of times people are building like these liquidity services where they're saying, you know, I'm a liquidity provider, and you can pay me, and I'll provide you some liquidity. Um, but the thing about that is there's going to be a, only a small subset of people who are like, actively creating this as a business. Um, but what we want with the Lightning Network is we want a, a network that's very well distributed. So with Lightning Loop, you can actually go to any node in the entire network, and you can do the swap, and you can get inbound liquidity from any node in the entire network. Um, so, like, we strongly believe that, that that's going to the, the, provide the most health, the most uh, strength for the network. And when we talk about Loop, um, Loop uh, is oriented in the, network, in, the, in the direction of the Lightning Network. So Loop Out is to loop from Lightning onto the chain, and Loop In is to, loop, uh, is to go the other way. OK, so the big thing I really want to talk about is the cost of submarine swaps. So uh, that's kind of like the big challenge. So right, right now, we've actually released uh, Lightning Loop to production. And you can try it uh, on mainnet and um, loop in on testnet. And I previously worked on a, a mainnet version of, of loop in at submarineswaps.org. Um, and uh, the big thing we've always focused on is, is, is creating that uh, non-custodial experience and the network health experience. But what we're, what we're working on uh, in the future is going to be this idea that we want to uh, we want this to be actually an efficient experience. And I'll talk about like the the problems with submarine swaps as they exist right now, is that they have these costs. So uh, you can see on the um, on the illustration that what a submarine swap actually looks like in terms of chain transactions. So when you're funding the chain transactions to do the swap, you have an input which is the input that funds the swap. And maybe you have multiple inputs, because you need to collect multiple inputs to do the swap for multiple coins. And then once you fund the swap, uh, you are probably not going to have an exact change. So you're going to need some of the funds to go to the, to the swap itself and the, to, to uh, the destination. And then some of them are going to go back to yourself. That's just how uh, normal Bitcoin transactions work. And then once they're, once they're in that um, sweep destination, they're going to be then needed to, to be uh, further paid on to a future destination that you want to send them to. So you can see that actually um, it's, it's kind of a heavyweight operation. It's not just one transaction. And there's, there's multiple inputs. And there's multiple transactions. There's multiple outputs. So it makes it a bit expensive. And there's another cost to it, which is that you reveal that you're doing this, this swap on the chain. So, um, People can see that this HTLC went to the chain. They can see that the, your, your UTXOs were involved in it. Um, so there's these two costs. So uh, one, one thing that I'm working on at Lightning Labs is this idea that we can minimize those costs. And you know, I really tried to think about what's the absolute minimum we can get to. Because we, you know, we, we're committed to like, uh, using chain space very efficiently. Um, so the, one of the, the, the way that we can really use the chain space most efficiently is we can actually take part of the swap off the chain again. So instead of depositing into the, uh, putting the HTLC on the chain, we can actually kind of create a temporary channel. And the temporary channel can say, we're set up to do this swap, but actually we're depositing into a multisig. And we're going to do all the signing of the transactions as if we were going to go to chain. But then we're going to replace those transactions with a, a cooperative transaction that gets rid of all of that chain, that HTLC that lives on the chain. And even more than that, uh, we're working on a way to, uh, and uh, Schnorr will help with this, is, is a way to combine multi-sig uh, signatures so that many, many people can combine their signatures into one signature. Uh, and that's kind of an unbounded uh, gain. So if we have 1,000 people uh, all swapping at once, that can all be collapsed into one single signature. Um, so you can see uh, in, this, in this diagram up here, it's, you can see that this is the entire transaction and all of the inputs and outputs for the swap. So instead of having you know, five different inputs and, and, or th you know, three different outputs, we just have one input that funds the entire swap. And that's all going into this multi-sig between all the participants in the swap. And then for the outputs, outputs are pretty small. Um, you know, they're like you know, 30 bytes or something, depending on how you, how you construct it. Um, so that means that the, we, can, we can swap huge numbers of people 
in one combined collapse transaction and get huge, huge space savings, maybe 10x or more. So the, the net of this is uh, if you actually do the numbers and calculate how many swaps could we even do, how many, like let's say we wanted to push the existing chain to the max without any forks, without uh, you know, changing the rules, we could get billions of people to be doing these swaps on the current infrastructure, um, even though we know that's going to improve. So that's something that I'm pretty excited about uh, being able to release to everybody is uh, swaps that are very cheap. And this is even cheaper than, this is potentially even cheaper than uh, splicing. Because splicing is very ad hoc. That's one, you know, you're doing a splicing, somebody else is doing a splicing, they're not necessarily organized. But if you can organize uh, a lot of people together into one kind of transaction, you can actually even get better uh, scaling characteristics than if you know, everybody themselves are having their own inputs and their own outputs. Um, so I, I feel like uh, submarine swaps is not only something that you can use today to solve problems, like to get inbound liquidity for your node or to refill your, your, your depleted channels, it's something that could potentially be part of the Lightning Network going forward as a way to deal with uh, unbalancing that will happen naturally. 